Hi everyone, Diane here. Hope you're all well. Today's video is for everyone who doesn't know what to paint today, but wants to. Or maybe you've never painted before, or you've only just started, and you don't know whether you can handle a real painting. So come with me and let's discover a way of beating the block, beating depression, beating the blahs. Let's get started. Today, what we're going to talk about is um, that horrible thing called painter's block. I think that expression comes from writer's block, but we've all faced this painter's block thing many, many, many times. And uh, I have got a suggestion for one way of getting you out of that block. If you want to paint something, of course, there are times when you don't want to paint anything. And then you probably ought to go and do some crochet or knitting or gardening or something. Um, but if you want to get started with painting, um, and you don't know what to paint, and that happens to me every single day. So I'm an expert on this. Um, I've got a couple of things to suggest that um, you should do, and this is one of them, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and the other thing is this. We're going to talk about this for a tick as well. This is a very old um, paint box, and so is this. And I hope Tamsin's going to put a bit B-roll in here to show you what these paint boxes looked like um, up until yesterday. But yesterday I suddenly had a brainstorm and I realised that I could turn two complete shambles into two organised um, things. So I took all the paints out, I washed the tins, they're very old, they're all as old as Tamsin. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, and I organised them into blues and greens and yellows and reds and then I put them back in and I did swatches of them to show me which colours are which on both sides. I don't have the names of all of them because quite a lot of them, the names have rubbed off or they were never on the little um, half pan containers. So I don't know, but I don't need to know what, what their names are. I can see what the colours are and I can tell and I'm sure you can too, that this is powder blue or baby blue. This is a darker blue. This is a turquoisey kind of blue. And you can pick what you want from seeing what you've got on your swatch. That's the point in having them swatch out. So I'm really quite excited about this and it's going to make a huge difference to me um, as far as painting goes going forward. Um, and you'll see one of the reasons why in a minute, because I'm going to show you this technique for breaking your painter's block. What do you think of these? These are dried rose petals, which um, Tamsin dried for me from the garden. We've got a very prolific, why, almost wild rose. It's, it's wild in the sense that it will grow out of solid rock. Um, absolutely indestructible. We have tried to cut it down because it grows out of our building where we live. Um, tried to cut it down hundreds of times, but it just keeps coming back. Anyway, so she picked some of the flowers and put these in the sunshine to dry. And they're really nice, they smell good. Um, and it's been so unbelievably hot and dry the last couple of months, we, we probably could do sun-dried tomatoes if we wanted to. Um, that would be if the tomatoes would grow, which they won't because it's too hot. Okay, so having said that, so first tip, if you're blocked, reorganize your paints, not just open the tin and paint them out, but actually sort them out and look and see what you've got. And if you've got some tubes, then get yourself a bag of these. This is a thought too. Um, if you've got tins with spaces in, you can buy these little uh, half pans. They're dead cheap on Amazon. Oops, there we go. They wanted to come out and say hi. And um, you just put one in and squeeze paint into it and leave it to get a little skin over the top of it. Um, and then what, what's your uncle? You've got a pan full of paint. Um, so yes, that I thought was not a bad idea. But what I'm going to show you now is how to break that. I want to paint something, but I don't know what kind of situation. So I've got a piece of 140 pound Clairefontaine Etival paper here. And I've got a round brush, nylon, this is a size seven. And what you do for this little game that we're going to play is called paint the circle. And you pick, let's say, four different colours that you're going to paint in. 
And uh, let's start with my greens and blues, shall we? And you say, okay, I'm going to, well, in fact, anything in here would probably work. So we're going to paint greens and blues. And you say, okay, I'm going to start with this. And it doesn't matter what color it is, because you're just going to be painting free and easy. So you paint a circle. We'll start with circles. And then you're going to pick up another color and you're going to add to it. And it's up to you what you do. Thing is with the circle, they don't make any demands. They're just circles. So if you don't want to waste that paint, you can use it for the next one. But if you want to change colors, change colors. So I'm going to go now to this color. I have no idea what that is. It's a nice blue. And then I'm going to paint, oh, no, maybe not. Perhaps that's a bit too pale. Well, if it's pale, what I'll do, I'm going to paint a whole circle like that. And then I need something a bit darker. So number three here looks like it's probably quite dark. I think this is French ultramarine. So uh, where's it gone? There it is. We will use that one. And I will just drop in some darker makes you think of roses but we're not trying to paint anything in particular we're just doing circles and then we're going to go back to a green let's try this one maybe and i'll do a circle in the middle like that then you can do anything you want the point is you're just painting circles and you'll see why you're doing this in a minute so we just paint some circles. Just try any kind of different um, method that you can think of, of creating a row of circles. So there's a circle in the middle. And then we could come in with this green, which we used up there, which is amazing. You can let it touch and let it run. This is great for practicing your watercolour control as well. Now, which one did I start off with? Um, I don't know where I, what I started off with. Lost my thread. Must have been that one. So we put that round the outside. And then we're going to let that dry. And then we're going to come back in and take it a step further. While that's drying, I will go to my yellow and red palette and have an exciting time over here as well. So let's start in the middle with, this looks like brown, but it's not, it's quinacridone gold. So we'll do a center in quinacridone gold. Then maybe we'll pick up some orange and paint round. I guarantee by the time you finish doing this, you will be ready to paint a flower or something like that. And we could start with red in the middle, perhaps. And then maybe quinacridone on the outside, perhaps. Look at the way that bleeds, it's amazing. Okay, maybe we can find a nice um, dark colour for the centre. What shall we use? Um, that's, this is a kind of rusty colour, I'm not sure if I want to use that. Mm. We could go with, well, that's Potter's Pink. Let's go with this. And then mix that with some orange. Two colours that you wouldn't necessarily put together normally. And then I'm going to just let that bleed out. And 
Let's go for red. And then a dark red, brown. And maybe, oh, I'd already done black. Don't want to do that. And So there we are. Now, the next step, you could come back in again with color. You can come back in, let's say, with some more turquoise and do extra lines like that. And this one particularly looks like it could do with some extra lines but the idea is to keep it really light and simple and non-judgmental the idea is that you don't judge yourself with this you just let it happen and then we can come in with some pen work. I've got a gold fine liner, I've got a micron, and I've got a white, a new white Sigma pen here. And first of all, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some lines around the outside on this one. And, you know, holding the pen really lightly and just letting it go wherever it wants to go. And then we're thinking about neurographic art here. And I'm just going to break into my circles with some lines. Like that. Then where the lines go over one another, and hopefully things are dry, we're going to go in and put um, circles over the points at which the lines cross one another like that. This is just one thing that you could do. And then other things, you could do little rows of dots on the outside or on the inside. Any kind of embellishment. You can go to your white and you could do a line around on the inside like this. Or you could go to the gold and you could do dots in gold. And you are not, the important thing is you are not trying to make this look good. You are not trying to make it look like anything. You are not doing it because you want to give it to someone. You are just doing it. Then we come on to the next one and I'm going to do this one a different way. I'm going to start with my neurographic three lines like that. And then I'm going to do overlapping circles going around like this. You can do anything whatever you feel you would like to do. And then I'm going to turn the ends here into leaves. Then I'll do my joining dots. Don't have to do that though, if you don't want to. Notice I'm not doing them like they, like you're supposed to. I'm just putting dots. And then I'm going to take my white and I'm going to do sets of spots here where it's nice and dark and it will show up well. And then maybe we might do, I don't know, I, my pen wanted to do little hearts there, I don't know quite why. So we do little hearts. 
So that's that one. And then this one, I'm going to do a spiral in the center and maybe some lines going around. And then I might do some gold on this one rather than black. So we can just do a circle around the outside. Maybe I will do my lines across like this. Some dots. I'll do for that one. Oh, this one's crying out for dots. Look at this. Start off with the dots on this one. Circle round, maybe. Maybe a dark line around the outside. I'll leave that one like that. And so on. And so on and so on. And by the time you've done a few of those, you probably will want to paint something sensible. Um, so that's the way that would work. And here are a few that I've made into bookmarks. These are my trial ones from earlier on. And I think they're rather, um, what's the word? They might make me think of um, Native Indian stuff. I've got this book here by Julie Soskin and it's kind of, looks kind of appropriate on there, doesn't it, don't you think? Anyway, so there's an idea. When you're stuck, you can't do anything, don't want to start anything serious, just paint some circles. You can do squares as well, or triangles. And, uh, you know, sky's the limit, really. Do whatever you like. I quite like that one, I think. So I will let you go now, and I will see you here again tomorrow. So bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye.